Management Accounting 8, Closing an Unprofitable Division. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, and our LinkedIn page, NBA Accounting and Finance. So our scenario here is, is that we have a uh, sort of like a Lowe's or a Home Depot, a home improvement company that has three divisions, paint, carpeting, and wallpaper. And they're considering closing their wallpaper division. So what I have at the top of the page here is how the company looks with the wallpaper division, and, and below it, how the company looks when it's closed. And we need to consider um, some criteria here. And the criteria to consider, as I've done in other videos, are the relevant decisions. Which decisions are relevant? Which decisions will cause higher income or lower expenses as a result of the decision that we make? Past costs or sunk costs get ignored. Money that we spent regardless of the decision we make on whether we close it or whether we keep it open. So you can see here that we have sales less variable costs and a contribution margin. We have fixed costs, total costs, and then we go out and we calculate an operating profit or loss right here. And we see that in the wallpaper division we have a $17,000 loss as things stand now. So what do we do when we change it? Well, first of all, we lose the sales, but we also lose the variable costs because we're not making any wallpaper, so the variable costs go away, which gets us down to a contribution margin of zero. Another thing that was stated in the problem was is that we're going to make some changes where we're going to remodel some space and we're going to spend $12,400 more dollars in the carpeting division. But we're also going to increase sales of the carpeting division by $120,000. And finally, our contribution margin, sales minus variable costs, for the car carpeting division are going to go up 5%. Now that was a little hard to figure out, so let's see what happened. The fixed costs went up by that $12,400, so we had that additional cost come in. Our sales went up by D32, which was the 120000 so if I take the 460 plus the 120,000, I get the 580,000. So I know my $580,000 sales number. I know what my fixed cost number is. So now I have to figure out my variable cost to get my new contribution margin, which is 35%. Bear in mind that it went from 30 to 35%. So how do I go about doing that? Well, I want to solve for X, which is the variable cost. So if I have $580,000 in sales minus some X, that's going to equal 35%. So if I click on this formula here, what I did was take H19, which was the sales, times, if I go back to the formula, H35, which was the new contribution margin. So I got 203,000, which was the contribution margin in dollars, and then I checked it because I took sales, I took contribution margin divided by sales, and I got that 35%. So I proved the number here. So I get my contribution margin. So now I have 580,000 in sales less the 203,000 contribution margin I figured out here. And now I can solve for variable costs in the middle, which is 377, and I plug that in up here. So now I have a formula where sales minus variable cost equals contribution margin. And the contribution margin divided by sales is 35%. So I know that that works. So let's go back to the wallpaper. Sales goes away, variable costs go away. We have some fixed costs that remain. The example that was given in the problem was 60% of our fixed costs remain. 
So the only outcome in the wallpaper column is we have a loss of $27,000, which is simply the fixed cost. We had carpeting sales go up by 120000 We had fixed costs go up by 112400 Let's click on that entire formula to show you. We had the 75000 from up here plus D31, the 12400 plus D48, which is farther down at the bottom here. We're going to advertise more in the carpeting division by amount of $25,000. So $75,000 fixed costs, original, plus $12,400 to remodel, plus $25,000 additional ad spending that we consider a fixed cost. Our new fixed cost for the carpeting division is $112,400. So we subtract sales minus total costs to come up with a carpeting profit. Now another change that happened in painting, and this is where the impact of closing one division affects another. Because we close the wallpaper division, we are selling 20% less in paint and supplies. So we can see that paint went from 380,000 in sales down to 304,000 in sales. So that was a decline in sales. So as a result of the sales decrease, variable costs being the same, fixed costs being the same, the operating income for paint, if I can scoot up to the top here, the operating income for paint went way down because we sold so much less. So the bottom line is, if we keep the wallpaper division open and we add up the profit of all three, divisions we have $142,000 profit. If we close wallpaper, make the fixed cost changes and the sales increase to carpeting, and absorb the paint decrease in sales, and if we add up the numbers along the bottom we see that operating income goes down, so we actually have a decline in operating income of $58,400. So the question, should we close the wallpaper division, the answer is no, because the total operating income decreased by 58, that number is 58,400. What about if we had some inventory? The question that was asked was, well, what if we've got some wallpaper inventory that was left over? Since that wallpaper inventory was a, a sunk or past cost, that would have to be expense somehow. It wouldn't be a sunk or past cost that we would ignore. It would be a sunk cost in that we would have to expense it. That would be an additional loss. The reason it would be a larger loss would be that if we left the wallpaper division open, we'd have a chance to sell this inventory. If we close the wallpaper division and we assume that there's no resale price for the inventory that's left, we would add on to our $58,400 loss in this case it was 23,700 in inventory that was left over. So if you close a division and you have inventory, you either sell it for some price to another vendor or in this question since no sale price was mentioned we consider the whole amount to be an additional loss of $23,700. That's the end of Management Accounting 8 closing an unprofitable division. Not on the web, you'll find additional videos and spreadsheets not on YouTube. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd, STL, all one word. You can email me for a complete listing of our videos on YouTube. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and live chat sessions, stltest.net is the site. Here's our email and our phone. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.